Hello everybody. Today we are going to be making a very, very famous recipe of mine. It is a Hawaiian version banana bread and it is, it's probably the best one I've ever had. Um, everybody makes it a little bit different. Uh, this is how we're gonna do this one. It's actually very easy. So if you have some extra bananas laying around that are kind of past their prime, make this. All right, first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna take one cup of shortening. Don't freak out. Don't leave me hate comments. Come on, man. This is gonna, it's gonna be good. One cup. This is gonna make two loaves, by the way, too. I have seen other people uh, do a similar recipe with butter. I haven't tried that myself because I just prefer, the, prefer it this way, but branch out if you'd like. And to this, I'm going to add two cups of sugar. Again, don't freak out, this is going for two loaves. You can cut this in half if you'd like. Now I have found with this recipe, before I get this, this noisy blender going, um, I have found with this recipe that if you choose to use the shortening, you're gonna wanna cream them together very, very well because if there are little tiny pockets that of, of shortening that don't get mixed in all the way, they'll end up melting down um, to the point where when you take a bite, every once in a every once in a while you'll get kind of a little bitter, a little bitter bite. You don't want that. So make sure that they're creamed together very, very well. Now, this is usually at the point where people say, oh look, they're incorporated, they're good, they're done. You're wrong. Keep going. You're gonna actually cream them. you'll probably feel the difference when it changes in your hand mixer. It kind of feels like it gets almost thicker, but it's not. It, you can just tell. So just pay attention to pressure coming back on your beater, and it'll tell you when it's done. All right, so I think I'm probably done at this point, so we'll go with that. Also keep in mind that the reason you beat it so long at this stage is because you can't overmix it later. Um, or it, your cake is going to go flat, your bread's going to go flat, uh, as well as the reason we do this is to get those air pockets, those nice little air pockets in there so that it gets nice and fluffy. All right, too much words, more stuff, let's go. All right, so we're going to add, nope, we're going to add four eggs to this. These are fresh from this morning, guys. Can't get any fresher than that. All right, we're gonna beat those in. And to that, we get to add our bananas. All right, so you can see these are definitely past their prime, but they're still good eats for this, so. Uh, three of them, usually about this size, equal about a cup of mashed. So because we've doubled it, we're gonna do all six. If I can open one, that would be the greatest thing ever. Here we go. If you wanna pre-mash them, you can. I get lazy and I just dump them all in at this stage. No judgment, it's good. All right. All right. Now I'm just gonna do a quick, a quick smash so that when I don't, when I turn this on, it doesn't all start going flying out. You kind of want to break it up just a little bit, help yourself out, and away we go. Okay, now part of the reason I do it this way is because I happen to like my banana bread coming out with just tiny little chunks of banana in it. If you don't like that, you don't have to do that. This is very easy, but I do. So I'm gonna leave just a little bit there and then we're going to add two and a half cups of flour. I have one teaspoon of salt 
and I have two teaspoons of baking soda for the lift. So I'm going to mix those together because I don't know about you, but I don't like pockets of salt either. So mix those together before you incorporate it. And I promise you'll have better bread. A lot of times it just comes down to technique, you know? It's interesting how we can all use the same ingredients and turn out different dishes. So it just depends on how you do it, right? Okay, that's, that's probably good enough. Doesn't need to be perfect. We're just gonna get in there. Now, this is the tricky part because we need to put this into there without over mixing it. So I'm gonna do just a little at a time. Make sure you get to the bottom too. Don't forget to scoop the bottom too. A lot of times we stay to the surface and we don't realize we're doing it. Make sure you get to the bottom too. I have had this recipe since I was in my early teens, and I can tell you it's the only one I've ever, ever used because when I taste other people's, I don't like it as much. So I don't know, maybe I'm a banana bread snob, but it's, it sure is one of my favorites. All right, almost there. Gonna get the last little bit of that out mixed in. Another thing you want to make sure is you don't get pockets of flour because that's not good eats. Okay. All right, I think we're there. Let me grab our pans. I have two loaf pans here and I'm going to spray them down with some, some cooking spray. Mine happens to be coconut oil, but I've used other things. I've used raw butter, whatever. Boy, that smells so good. All right, now I'm gonna do my best to get them even in these pans. And away we go, into the oven. That is a 350 degree oven, and those pans are gonna go for about 40, 45 minutes, depending on your oven, watch it, because I have to do mine a little bit less. Um, if you're doing the mini loaves, usually those are about 20 minutes, so um, play around with that, watch it. It's going to turn out very, very dark because of the sugar content, so don't freak out and think that it's not getting done or it's overdone. Uh, don't take it out too early. That's a mistake, I promise. It's going to go very, very dark, and I'll show you here when it's done, and we will show you what color that is. Time is up. Let's get these out of the oven. See what I mean by they look really, really dark? That's okay, this is how they're supposed to look. So you didn't ruin it if yours turns out like this. That is A-OK. -okay. One thing to mention too is that on this, because of the sugar content and the way that they're so dark and crispy, 
they're going to have this wonderful, beautiful crust on the outside. And it's gonna be so nice and moist on the inside. It's just, it's just heaven, I love it. In fact, when I, when I wrap them up later, I'll wrap them up in tin foil when they're, when they're cool, but I'll leave the tops exposed so that it doesn't get all wishy. So, we'll let those cool down, we'll take them out, and then we're gonna eat. See you in a minute. All right, folks, it's cooled down enough. I think we can dig in. Ooh, so exciting. All right, I'm gonna tip this to the side. And yes, my hands are clean, but if you can hear this, it's got this nice crunch, crunch on the outside. The ends are my favorite, for real. All right, here we go. See that? That's amazing. All right, we're gonna dig in. Mm. That's some good eating. That is so good. It's great for breakfast, it's great for a snack. Um, these generally don't last very long in my house. However, um, they do freeze nicely. I have tried that and they thaw out just great too. So give it away for Christmas gifts, keep them for yourself, no judgment. And um, if you make any adjustments or if you make any, uh, if you do anything different to yours, let me know how it turns out in the comments below. Again, I didn't use walnuts on this one, but you absolutely can. And um, we'll talk to you later. Mm. So good.